So this is all the stuff we're going to talk about in this episode. So for the heated bed, we have a 6mm aluminium plate and a silicon based heater, well silicon based, silicon pad heating element from Filofarm. The 6mm plate is different to a lot of aluminium plate that you'll typically find. So sheets are normally drawn or rolled out, which means you get induced stresses in the material from the manufacturing process and then over heat cycles it tends to warp over time. Probably not that much in the sort of realistic view, but it's not like extremely more expensive to go for tool plate. So that basically means it's cast. A cast piece of aluminium is basically poured molten metal into a sheet form and then cut and milled to be square and flat. And then because of that process, you only have some minor stresses on the surface and very little internal stress, which results in a part that will remain flat. The heating element itself is a 330 watt and 230 volt, so approximately useful for European region. It's made by Filofarm and comes with their Silly Protect built in, which I think is a thermal fuse. So if it gets too hot, like if the heater goes out of control, then that basically comes in, cuts the circuit, which is why you also have the earth connector on here, which is something you don't typically get. Fortunately from Filofarm, you can get the corners cut off the heater so it comes without the corners which means you can have a nice square bed and heating all the way across it and then you drill the holes through the plate yourself it's pretty easy to do aluminium's fairly soft so connecting this we have obviously the thermistor standard connection straight to the ramps board which looks like that i've put a little connector on it and some oh it's a daisy some of this wire covering stuff just to hold the wires together and keep it tidy. The earth connector, that will go straight to your power supply. Well, it could go straight to the wall, but for me, I'm putting it to the earth terminal on the power supply, which is in turn connected to the earth terminal on the wall. And then lastly, we have this. This contains the live and neutral connections to the mains, which will be connected to the connector that you see there. Nothing particularly special about the connector, it just sort of goes in like a normal connector would, you know, sort of like that. And then the heating bed itself is not going through the power supply. So in typical configurations of a uh, 3D printer, everything will go through the power supply. So it will be converted from the AC mains into 12 volts or 24 volts DC, something like that, through the power supply unit. But this is a mains powered heating bed. So we use one of these, an SSR. The way this works is you have two sides. You have your low voltage side, so three to 30 volts DC. We will be using about 12 volts as we get from the ramps board. And we have the opposite side, the mains controlled side, so 24 to 380 volts AC. Now the 380 volts is important because your AC is obviously a waveform and the 230 or 240 volts is in the middle and you get fluctuations. So 380 volts gives you your suitable limits for mains at 230 or 240 sort of volts-ish. So say the voltage is at 12 volts this side, this little red light will come on and it will connect these two parts together, allowing the mains to heat the bed. If this drops off, so the light goes off because this is now at zero volts or whatever the control voltage is, this cuts the circuit here and then mains no longer hits the bed. Simple. That's how an SSR works for purposes of a 3D printer. One of the big advantages of using a mains powered bed is you don't have to put all the power through the power supply. If we were, say we might be using, say for this at 330 watts, a 25, 25 watt heating cartridge, a few stepper motors, you might be looking at needing a 450 watt, 400 watt power supply. So at 12 volts, that's a lot of current to run through wires. So you'd end up with massive thick wires, huge amounts of losses, and just generally sort of a bit of a waste. So what we're doing here is by taking the bed out of that power circuit, we can reduce the wattage needed by the power supply. So I did some testing with a E3D heating cartridge 
and all the stepper motors and ran a print just without the heating well with the heating bed but that was being powered obviously off the mains so we just got the steppers and heating cartridges coming through the power supply and that used just under 60 watts so if you do want to do this i would recommend trying to get a low wattage but high quality power supply this particular unit is one i already had laying around so that's what i'm using but i would highly recommend getting a low wattage say 70 or 80 watts 12 volt high quality power supply from someone reputable in your country in the uk we might go to rc or farnell rs components rather or farnell and both of those will shell shell both of those will sell these sorts of power supplies i've forgotten what they're called off the top of my head high quality low wattage 12 volts or 24 but i'm going 12 volts and then for safety reasons and for convenience we're going to put this nice blue box on the back so your mains will come in here the earth live neutral connections will come to the power supply and the earth connection from the bed will also come off of that and that just basically keeps your connections out of the way of prying fingers it has a nice switch with it and a fuse so a couple of extra safety mechanisms there now for the printing surface itself here I've got two glass sheets. These are borosilicate glass, four millimeters thick. And I have one sheet of PEI. So the PEI, I will cut down and put that on one glass sheet and the other sheet will just be plain glass. So I can switch them in and out and they're attached on with the ever so high quality clips. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. If you wanna know what's going on next, uh, remember to subscribe. I will be releasing files for you to be able to build your own and alongside that there will be huge amounts of assembly instructions to guide you along the way. So I think that's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. This has been CRT.